Nigel Ardari. Um, as predicted last month, it was an incredibly slow month for me time-wise. Um, I only actually managed to get out of the once and I very nearly didn't bother uh, coming out that time. Um, it was right in the middle of that uh, ridiculously hot heat wave we had. I got down the lake at about 6 o'clock and it was still showing over 30 degrees on my, uh, my car. Um, suffice to say I didn't really fancy my chances too much, um, but it did actually turn out to be my best session that I've ever had down here. Um, I think that sort of, uh, that came about through a couple of different reasons. Um, firstly, on my, uh, my bottom bait rods, I had been fishing a swim where I was having to, uh, to cast alongside some pads. Um, it's a swim that gets fish reasonably regularly on here, I believe. Um, but it doesn't really give you a great angle into the spots you want to fish. Um, I say you're having to sort of go alongside the pads, your lines cutting through the water alongside them and, and you get no end of liners and um, it just wasn't really the one to be honest. Uh, so I moved my rods up to another, it's not even a swim really, it's just a, a little opening in the reeds. Um, but this enabled me to get my, my baits across the, the swim I was originally fishing in and sort of straight at the pads um, and it also opened up a little couple of uh, bays in the pads for me that I could present my hook baits into. Um, that night I had my first take off the, off the bottom over bait that I've had for well, probably a month or two now and um, it turned out to be a, a lovely little 21 pound common. Uh, it was a really really clean fish and uh, yeah I was over the moon, it was nice to get one fishing over a bed of bait, um, everything else I've had recently is either been off the surface or, or just stalked right out the edge over a little handful of uh, chops and bits and pieces. Um, the following morning, sort of just after first light, uh, I had another take on the same rod again. Um, unfortunately this, uh, this buried itself deep in the pads and, and there was just no way of getting it out. I think, uh, to be honest, it had uh, dropped the hook pretty quickly. Um, through the heat of the day, uh, the bottom rods went quiet for obvious reasons. As soon as it got to about half nine, ten o'clock, all the fish were, were popping up, hitting the surface, cruising about, and um, they just didn't seem to have a care in the world, to be honest. Uh, I tried firing a few big biscuits out there. Um, I had one or two sort of come up and half-heartedly nudge at them and, and take the odd one down, but it was obvious they were not in the mood for any kind of um, food at all. So uh, I reeled the, the bottom rods in, had a good couple of walks around the lake and uh, I spotted a few fish in two or three different areas just sat down right in the edge amongst the, the marginal weed and pads. Um, so I've gone back and I've got my floater rod. Um, I actually put my little centre pin reel on. Uh, it's a little Fox Bob James centre pin. I'd never had anything on this above about 10 or 12 pound. Um, I thought, you know, sorry, it's, it's a good chance. They're right on the edge. Um, let's give it a go. So I've basically gone straight through to a size 6 Sig and Floater hook. Um, and I was just going around with my rod, my mat, my net, and a loaf of bread. Um, I came up to the first set of pads and immediately I saw a, a fish, I sort of estimated about mid 20s, uh, just sat in amongst the, the leaves. So I just pinched a bit of bread on, lowered that down in the nearest sort of opening to where it was, uh, it was surfacing. I just sat there, I basically waited for it to, to mooch along and, and hopefully find it. Um, it only took about two or three minutes. Um, fish started moving along after another one had, had come along and kind of spruced it into life a bit and it just came into the little clearing the head came up through the pads and uh, its mouth opened and, and that was it I was away uh, the fight didn't last very long uh, it was so I, I hooked it in amongst the pads so I, I had to pretty much get it out of there and get it in the net as soon as I possibly could um, and it was a cracking fish it was really really dark, scaly, lovely looking thing. Um, 
I can't remember the ounces, but it was uh, it was just over 24 pound. Um, and yeah, I was I was really really pleased. Uh, it's the biggest fish I've ever had on a centre pin, um, and it's always nice just just nicking them off the top in the edge and, and seeing them take your hook bait. Uh, after that, I, uh, I decided to have a little bit of a sit down. I had a walk up around the lake a couple of times and, and didn't see anything that was, was going to be in range for me, free line of the bait out there. Uh, so I had a sit down, had a bit of a rest, um, got a few fluids inside me, and after an hour or so, I, uh, I got up and had, had another walk, um, and I found a few fish in the, the same spot as I'd had the 24 from. Um, one of them in particular looked like it was certainly upper 20s, getting on to 30s. Uh, so I did the same thing again with bread, um, lowered it down into the nearest opening, um, and this one took a little bit longer. Uh, it was probably, I don't know, five, six minutes or so, and it just drifted into the, the opening where my hook bait was, and, um, and the bit of bread was gone again. Uh, fight from this one lasted a bit longer uh, it really did beat me up quite uh, quite royally under the, the rod tip in amongst the pads uh, but luckily I managed to, to keep the hook hold firm got it in the net and um, it was another mirror really really lovely fish again um, and that was uh, just over 28 pounds uh, so I was, I was absolutely made up I'd had a, a 21 in the night uh, unfortunately lost one in the morning um, and then had a 24 and a 28 as well, uh, both off the top on the centre pin, uh, three line bread, about as basic as you could, you could possibly get. Uh, after I put that one back, I went and had a look up another little spot that was about, I don't know, 50, 60 yards up the bank. Um, and I saw a, a rather large head just sat in amongst the pads there. So I've run back, I've got my, my rod and my net and my mat and everything, gone back up there and thankfully she was still sat there uh, just sunbathing amongst the pads about probably four or five yards out. So I baited the hook up, underarmed it out and uh, just let it drift in on the, the slight breeze there was and it settled in the pad right against uh, where her head was sat. And she's kind of just slowly, you could see her pecs moving, and she just slowly worked her way back, um, and she took it in, in next to no time at all. As soon as I sort of hooked into it, I, I thought it was the, the other big one that was in here. Um, she was diving down in the clear water right on the edge, um, and she absolutely smashed my knuckles to pieces on a couple of occasions with the, the centre pin. Um, I didn't realise quite how, uh, how brutal it would be catching a fish of that size on a centre pin, but my hand soon found out. Um, anyway, after about probably five or six minutes, I should imagine it was, of her going back and forth and, and diving into the, uh, into the margins, I managed to get her over the net cord, um, and straight away I could see it was the, the same one that I had last night, uh, last, night last month at, uh, at £39. Um, I'm not usually much of a fan of recaptures, um, but I had it off the top, so it was a new surface PB for me. I knew that already because uh, I'd never had a 30 off the top before, and uh, it was on a centre pin as well. So yeah, it was a, a really nice result, albeit a, a recapture, and I was still over the moon with it. Uh, once she was up on the scale, she'd actually dropped another pound from when I had her the month before. Um, I think she was 38.10 or 38.8, something like that. Um, but yeah, I was over the moon. I had, had one off the bottom, three off the top, lost another one off the bottom as well. Um, so the, the session couldn't have been going any better, really. Uh, not long after I'd had that one, probably about half hour or so later, a couple of lads came down. Uh, they'd been down the, the previous evening as well for a look around and said they were going to come back with the floater gear the following day. Uh, they went a bit further up from uh, where I'd done the night and started feeding a few mixers up there. And as soon as there was a, a few more bodies on the lake, um, the fish just seemed to, to drift away from the, the marginal spots that I'd been, I'd been getting them from. I did manage to, to hook another little common 
probably, I oh, know, three quarters of an hour to an hour later. Uh, but unfortunately, this, uh, this just shook the hook and uh, it was only probably mid doubles anyway. So, yeah, I never liked losing fish, but at least it wasn't anything overly sizable. So, I, uh, I could let it slide a bit, especially after the session I'd had. Um, looking forward to next month. Uh, I've actually got a couple of nights out on the bank, um, not for carp, but we're we're going to have a go for cats over at a lake in uh, Barway, which is over near Ely. Uh, there are a couple of lovely lakes, really nice, picturesque, tree-lined lakes, um, loads of pads, and uh, there's a couple of islands in both of them as well. Uh, the cats go to, to over £100 in here. Um, but I don't think there's a, a massive amount of them, so we'll, we'll see how we get on. But fingers crossed that uh, we might have a result and a, a big catfish to show next month at some point. Um, carp fishing wise, I might be able to get out the, the week after. Um, we shall see how the whole house move thing pans out um, and whether I've got to be around for that or not. But um, fingers crossed, I'll. Uh, so I've got the, the catfishing trip, which is, is definitely planned. We'll definitely be going on that. And hopefully. I'll get out for a night over over this lake as well, and fingers crossed, we'll um, carry on with the, the good rain of form that uh, that I've had on that that previous session. So uh, that's it for this month. Um, so I'll catch up with you next month, and fingers crossed for for a good month and uh, a bit less sunshine. <laughs>